Hey everybody, I uh, want to introduce a really fun project today. It's uh, what they call a four-way mini nook or a, a queen mating nook. Um, but basically what it is, is four, up to four different beehives in one box. It's got a lot of advantages. Um, for colony management, you can raise your own queens. You can put queens in here that you might not need right away. Um, and then you can actually grow this into a full-size hive. So there's three components to it that are unique um, to a regular Langstroth box and hive. Uh, first one's the inner cover. So you have four holes in this. It's also four panels to keep the bees from going from one to the other. So that's the first part that's a little bit different than this regular inner cover. The hive body itself has the ability to, divide, to be divided into four different chambers and instead of uh, the frames going from end to end, they go from end to half and half to end. Um, separated in the middle and there are four independent holes drilled to um, let bees in and out of the box itself. And then the last part that's unique to the mini nook, or four-way mini nook, is the bottom board. This is a solid bottom board. You could build it solid or screened. Um, either way, it comes with these pretty neat little entrances if you want to let your bees out this way. So this way they can uh, fly, or if you need to close them in, you can close them in. So, um, pretty fun project. This is the second one I built. This is for my buddy Ryan. And, uh, Anyhow, we'll take you through the steps to get it this far, and uh, let's get started. So we've already got our dados in to the short sides of the bottom board, and there are there is a front and back board. This is an enclosed bottom board. That's one way that it differs from a regular bottom. Um, and then what we've got is the saw is still set at that 3 8 inch depth, and we're going to mark it so that we run a dado uh, into the top because our, it's going to be a solid bottom board and we want the dado to lay uh, we want the top to lay flat with the because we're going to put on an extra piece onto here to use as an entrance gate but um, with it being a solid bottom board uh, the easier way to do that is lay your dado in and then add a piece on the top for your swing gates. So a little bit of data work and then we'll come back. Maybe this makes more sense now. So not only are the ends and the sides rabbited together, but the, it'll be a rabbit joint. And then we'll put one bias that we also rabbit together um, to, to make the board. So this is a kind of a hybrid project. We're using a couple different uh, methods. So this will be this will be the equivalent of the rabbit, as it you know, of course they'll match and, and everything. But they'll be that way. They can't get wavy and funky. But we are using uh, two different. Uh, we're using, of course, our book by Pisano, and then we're using. Um, the plans from the beekeepers workshop by Tillman um, because there's certain aspects I hit my head on the light bulb certain aspects of uh, each that I like better so for example um, I like Pisano's inner cover and I like Pisano's bottom board um, for, uh, but because it's solid I like the Pisano bottom board for the screen bottom board, I like the Michigan bee, uh, beekeepers, so don't be afraid to experiment either. Um, I'm not following the plans exactly, but they'll, they'll turn out right. But uh, I'm making things easier on me and, and using the tools I have here. But anyway, next step is we're going to cut the boards and rabbit them uh, to lay in the bottom board, and then we'll be back. Staples are basically just uh, there to clamp. This while the glue dries. Make sure it sits and stays like a good dog. <laughs> All right. 
is we've got the other ones in there. They're double rabbited. The reason why is as as these boards shrink over time, you see there's no noticeable gap here, and you don't want that to, to show through the and that you don't want an opening, I guess is what I'm saying. Another thing here is I'm not going to fasten this down. I'll use a piece here for visual. What we're gonna end up with is something like this on along the top. And what that'll do is that'll give us our B space. And one of the components of the bottom board for these mini nooks is that there's a um, opening gate. So what we'll actually be doing is using the um, B space gap as a way to fix the, as you can see, it's, it's gonna be three in, or inch wide, which will give us half coverage over the floor and on the edge. So we'll fasten that to the outside edge make our gates and everything that's cool in here and let these boards float that way they don't ever um, pull out or pull across the grain um, as they shrink and swell over time. One real quick update is um, I didn't think through the process and I, I didn't make this a square corner so I had a little chunk about the big as the end of your finger that was sticking proud. So all I did was I just cleaned the screw up so it's it's a square edge and that was just chisel and trim plane. I tell you, this thing is so handy. Anyhow, so now what we'll do is we'll cut down, uh, this is quarter inch plywood. Uh, we'll cut this down to fit inside here and then uh, we'll, we'll put glue on the inner rabbit and just a couple half inch staples just to hold it till the glue dries. And then the, we'll set the inner cover off to the side and assemble the box. So here's where I went a little bit different than Tillman's plans. Um, this central divider is uh, in the plans. It wants to be three separate pieces that are three eighths of an inch thick. The middle one six and five eighths if you're doing a medium, nine and five eighths if you're doing a deep. In each of the frame rests, then it wants to be five eighths inch lower. So in our case, it's a medium, so it's six. That's the same measurement as the end of the box of the frame rest. So this portion here with the print on it is six inches. You have a five eighths inch frame rest. There you go. So what I did different <clears throat> was uh, I didn't want to do a ton of planing or uh, anything like that. So I took a piece that was three quarter and I I just put the one as if it was going to be the end of the hive. So this is just a three quarter inch piece. It has a five eighths inch down. <laughs> it fell off. And uh, here I have a three eighths inch thick of piece of plywood that I cut to be six inches. And so anyway, the end result is the same where you have your, your two frame rests on either side. The other part that I'm doing a little bit different than Tillman's plans is on the first one of these I built, um, he wants you to let the center portion in to the sides. So you'd cut a groove on either side. Well, um, I didn't do that. It's not structural. It's um, So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just uh, edge joint that. So that's the edge and it'll get some glue and some, uh, there's probably some screws. Anyway, that's a lot of, a lot of talking. Um, these are the frames. I have a couple frames built up already that I haven't used yet in my workshop or my bee yard. So just so you can get that visual. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we are gonna follow the plans and we have to cut a divider into the end boards into each of the middle portions and that's for this Luan plywood. So this is obviously just a piece but it'll go in between and that's how it separates into four sections of five frames a piece. If you don't have Luan you'll you can use thicker stuff 
You just want to keep in mind B space and you might lose the uh, frame. It might turn into a four by four frames instead of four by five frames. So uh, we'll cut that glue on groove just with a single pass of the table saw blade and we'll cut it down the middle, like I said, of all these and just deep enough, probably three eighths an inch or so, uh, just deep enough to let it hold. And uh, then we'll come back and put the box together. I'll show you this mistake I made and hopefully you won't make it too. So I cut the middle and it's important to remember that the middle was only as wide as it is between my fingers. And so I had the table saw blade set and I ran the middle through, everything was cool. <laughs> so then I ran this one through. Problem is um, we have this extra three quarter because this is the edge of the box. So anyhow, I moved it over and uh, you could leave that. Really, you could, but I had this little piece, and I've been been working it over with the trim plane, and I got it to where it fits pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a little glue on it and put it in there. And uh, again, if your bees make fun of you for your your mistakes, then kick them out. But uh, that's just a way. To show you that it's all right to make mistakes, most of the time you can fix it. And if it really, really bothers you, then you made this mistake and it really bothers you, you can make another one of these pieces. It's pretty quick, but uh, because it's not a fatal flaw, not structural, and it can be fixed, I'm just going to fix it. Now well, here's the box as it's put together. You can see that crosswise divider and the Luon pieces so you don't take up any room in the uh, lengthways divider. So you have your four chambers. This is the inner cover we were working on and this is actually the hive side of the inner cover. So this is what it'll look like from the top and there'll be holes here for the feeder jars. Each one will have a hole. I think uh, 70 millimeters is the ways described. There's a template in the Tillman plans for it. So what I need to do here and what I've already started to mark out is <clears throat> I need to divide this inner cover into four chambers as well. So here's again another spot where we'll, we'll deviate from the Tillman plans. He wants a piece uh, to go across and a, and a piece to go lengthwise and he wants you to do a, uh, a rabbit and it's you just don't need to do that in my opinion. It's not structural. The biggest thing is this, this is for is to keep the bees into their own chambers. So what we're gonna do, um, you may be able to see I've marked off the four points and then I can make sure that I'm, I'm staying on those. This is a half inch wide, three quarter inch high and uh, it goes half inch down. So what I wanna do, it's gonna be hard to, visualize but I want to put I want to make it inch and a half wide that way it's guaranteed to be B, B tight and so uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll get them cut the length put them side by side glue them hit them with a brad or two just to hold them once they're glued they're not going anywhere and we'll do side by side here and then we'll meet up here and meet here just butt joints glues and brads um, some point we're gonna have to drill those holes for the inner cover but i'll probably do that um, for the feeder jars i'll probably do that very last as i'm trying to stay in the groove here and get this thing done so we're kind of jumping around a little bit but we're back to the bottom board uh, if you remember we built this bottom board it's a solid bottom board the plans call for a screened one and that's not important you make it screened or solid based off of how you like to keep bees but what we have to do now is because it's a solid and not a screen, we have to get this um, ridge up above. You don't want to put your, your box on this. Theoretically, you could. Um, but we're going to follow the plans on this. They want a 3 8 inch um, lip here, which we have these ripped down to 3 8 by 3 quarter. And the kind of the cool thing about this is course we'll chop them off to fit but you put a small piece one per chamber 
and you cut it at a 30 degree angle and it's in the neighborhood of three inches long. So it's going to look kind of like that. And what that'll let you do is that turns that into a swinging bee door. So you put a screw in the center of it, that lets it pivot, and you can open it or shut it based on whether you want the bees to stay in or get out or be able to get out. If you're gonna, excuse me, if you're gonna move them or if you've got a weak colony, you wanna give them less. There's an entrance on the bottom board and there's a corresponding entrance on the opposite corner of the same chamber for each chamber um, that has a hole in it that you drill at. So uh, what we'll do here is we will figure it out and then we'll glue and uh, tack these uh, pieces on and give us our the uh, final part of our bottom board. Right, we have the the uh, construction complete on the bottom board, on the on the box itself, and on the inner cover. So this was the part that I was telling you about with the closable gates. Um, if you need to keep your bees in, you put it like this. If you want to let your bees fly, you rotate it and open it up. And there's one of those per chamber, and uh, they are on the the box. Also has four holes in it and if you see here the box the holes in the box are on opposite corners but inside the same chamber so you you could have two different openings a lot of people put the entrance discs on these and uh, if that's something you want to do um, so each 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 chamber has potential for two different openings um, we did put cleats on it um, that's my preferred way versus the cut-in handles. And drill the holes like I mentioned. And then for the outer cover, uh, or I'm sorry, the inner cover, we drilled one hole per chamber, and that fits a one pint, or well, you can put whatever volume you want. That fits a regular mouth mason jar lid. And if you see here, it's got the separations too. So you put that, that wants to be on the hive like that. And so obviously you can't see, but each chamber has the ability to be segregated and fed separately. <clears throat> if you want to, and it's the way that I'm running this now out in my bees, is uh, if you want to run it as a double, you just pull your Luon out. If you want to segregate back into four chambers, um, you put the Luon in. Everything's B tight and ready to go. And so uh, the next step that I have here is to build the frames. Uh, these are half length frames. We'll follow the plans from Michigan Beekeepers. He has a really simple to follow um, frame construction. It's the same process that you would use if you're making full length frames, so if that's something you want to get into. But anyway, that was uh, how to build a mini nook for raising bees and doing other fun things. Um, I'd say it's, it's pretty basic woodworking. Don't be afraid to try it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit subscribe down in the lower right. And uh, other than that, Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this useful.